everybody and welcome back. I am happy to be here with you today. As many of you know, I have been sick for the past two, three weeks or so. I believe I had the flu along with laryngitis based on my research when I've lost my voice completely. I wasn't able to speak. I had pain in my throat. I had fever for a week. I was in bed. I have body aches, headaches. It it's really was brutal. I have never been that sick in my entire life. So I'm really happy that I'm regaining my health back. I'm able to speak. Even though my voice doesn't sound 100% like my old self, I think I have about 10% to, to heal. I'm extremely grateful that I don't have those pains anymore. I don't know if you hear that there is a um, cleaning person cleaning in the um, hallway. So if you cannot hear the vacuum, that's great. So I was talking about the fact that I'm grateful to have my health and just wanted to remind you to be grateful for your health because no matter how many dreams you have, no matter how many goals you want to achieve, you cannot do it without your health. And this is what I realized. So this is your lesson for today, along with what you're going to do next. Just first things first, just appreciate and say, thank you. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for the things that I can do and change the outcome of your day. That's your first lesson. And now the next thing that I want to remind everyone, and especially the new viewers, I don't really mention that anymore verbally in my videos. I have added it in my intro video, but I would like to remind everybody with an engineering degree from outside of the United States, if you are interested in evaluating your education in the United States of America, I have a guide called Credential Evaluation Guide, which takes you step by step into the process of how to evaluate your education in this country. If you are interested in doing that, click the link below and I will send that guide to your email inbox. Another guide that I have put together is called Integral Calculus and that guide contains examples with solutions on standard integral, integration by parts, integration by substitution and integration by separable variables. So if you would like a little bit more practice on that, Again, click the link below and I will send that guide to your email inbox. And finally, let's talk about our example for today. Today, we're gonna to talk about tension member rupture. I have an example for you, so let's go ahead and start. As always, I would like to first look in the FE handbook on what are you given on tension members. You can find tension members under the civil engineering chapter. And here you'll find the three main failure modes, which are yielding, rupture and block shear. Last week we discussed yielding and today we're going to discuss rupture. The formula for rupture is Pn equals to Fu times Ae where Pn is the nominal tensile strength, Fu is the ultimate tensile strength and Ae is the effective area and this is the formula for the effective area for bolted members and here you have for welded members and there are a lot of uh, conditions here. U is the shear lag factor, which for bolted members, flat bars, U equals to one. And for angles, you have the formula here. Same on the welded members, flat bars or angles with transverse welds, U equals to one. And a few other conditions for longitudinal welds. The thing is that I will probably have another video discussing in more detail the shear lag factor. Today, we won't need that. So let's go ahead and work on our example. The sketch shown represents the end of a double angle steel tension member with holes for a bolted connection. Yield strength of the steel is 50 KSI. Ultimate tensile strength is 65 KSI. The gross sectional area of the two angles together is 2.88 inches squared. Holes are punched 13 over 16 diameter for three quarter inch bolt. Assume shear lag factor equals to 0 0.85. What is the design strength for tension fracture? So again, I'll just go ahead and start with the formula given in the FE handbook for fracture. And we have Pn equals to Fu times Ae. Now let's go ahead and I would like to talk about what AE is. And of course, FU is giving in the problem. FU is the ultimate tensile 
Tran, and it is 65 KSI. And let's see, what is AE? Let's go back to FE Handbook, and let's see what AE is. AE is the effective area, and we have bolted connections, so we're going to use this over here. So AE equals to U times AN, where AN is the net area. So if we go back to our problem here and we write down U times AN, where AN is the net area. So net area, of course, equals to the gross area minus the area of holes. So let's see here. I'm going to redraw here these angles just a little bit bigger. So this we know it's a quarter inches. And this is the diameter of the hole. And this and here I would like to talk about what is that diameter of the hole and why is that. When we are giving the diameter of the bolt, we know that the hole has to be a little bit bigger for the bolt to fit into that hole. So per code, we are making that hole 116 bigger. And then due to punching in real life, when they make the hole, there is another area around this hole that it's damaged due to punching. And that distance on both sides together is another 1 16th. So this over here is the diameter of the hole. So diameter of the hole is going to be equal to diameter of the bolt plus 1 16th of an inch. And this is due to oversize. You have to make the hole a little bit bigger to fit the bolt. And then plus another 1 16th of an inch. And this is due to damage. due to punching. In our problem, we're giving the hole diameter and the bolt diameter. And this is the nominal hole diameter. We have to add another 1 16 to this. So the diameter of the hole in our case is going to be equal to diameter of the bolt plus 1 16 plus 1 16 equals and we have three quarters plus one sixteen plus one sixteen and this equals to zero point eight seven five inches. So this is the diameter of the hole. And you might ask what is this then? When this is the nominal diameter of the hole meaning that, so I'll do this, diameter of the hole is going to be equal to the nominal diameter of the hole and age plus 1 16th of an inch. And this is going to be equal to 13 over 16. And we have to add only 1 16 because this is the nominal diameter of the hole without taking in consideration the damage around it. So we're going to add the damage, which is 1 16th of an inch. And this should be equal to the same thing, 0 0.875 inches. So now that we have the diameter of the hole, we can calculate the net area. Going back here, we have A net equals to gross area you're giving in the problem, 2.88. So we're going to do 2.88 minus, and then the, the hole, we have two of them. 
we're going to do 0 0.875 multiplied by a quarter two times. So I'm going to do 0 0.5. So a n it's going to be equal to 0 0.875, 0 0.5 multiplied. 2.88 minus, and you get, you should get 2.44 inches squared. And now that we know A net, the net area, we can calculate the effective area, which is equal to U times A N. And this equals to 0 0.85. The shear like factor is given in the problem. And the net area is 2.44. And this gives us that effective area is equal to 2.08 inches squared. And now that we have the effective area, we can calculate the nominal strength. So the nominal strength is going to be equal to Fu, ultimate tensile strength, which is given in the problem and it's 65 KSI multiplied by AE, which is 2.08. And we get 134.9 kips. Again, I hope you know by now that you cannot stop here. The problem is asking us to calculate the design strength for tension and not the nominal strength for tension. So going back to the FE handbook, the fee for rupture is 0 0.75. So the design strength for rupture is going to be equal to phi p n is equal to 0 0.75 times 134.9 kips. And this gives me CPN equals to 101.2 kips. So be careful when you do these problems and be careful at this nomenclature, design strength, nominal strength. If you ask design strength, you have to multiply by the fee factor. And we get 101.2, so the correct answer is A. That was it for today. If you have any question about this example, please leave it in the comment section below. In the next week, we're gonna talk about block shear failure. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and give it a like because this helps put this video in front of more people just like you. Take care of your health and I'll see you next week.